Hello everyone and welcome to another game from the semi-finals of the FTX um, uh, Crypto Cup knockouts. It's Temo Rajava versus Magnus Carlsen and you guys started suggesting this one as soon as it finished as if I wasn't going to cover it. Uh, of course I am. Uh, and it's, uh, well, uh, Rajabov is in a really tight spot. He needs a win to bounce back into the match because after the two draws Magnus won the third game and now Rajabov needs a win to bounce back and go uh, well. Uh, with leveled uh, chances for, for the second match tomorrow. So now he has the white pieces and let's see what he decides uh, to do for this one. And yes, uh, this one uh, is another saga of the light square bishop. So let's see uh, how it goes. We have d4 by Rajabov, uh, knight to f6. We have c4, e6, knight to f3 uh, and d5 now. We have knight to c3. Uh, so just a nice queen's gambit. The decline is on the board and bishop to b4 going for the Ragozin defense. Uh, we have bishop to g5 by... Uh, Rajabov and now h6 challenging this bishop asking do you want to go back do you want to throw in queen to a4 check there are a lot of very interesting ideas or do you just want to capture on f6 so here uh, Rajabov captures we have queen captures and only now queen to a4 check you have to block this with the knight otherwise you're going to lose the bishop so knight to c6 and now e3 so this is nothing new this has all been played before many times uh, we have castled by Ma castles by Magnus and rook to c1 now uh, we have queen to g6 now hindering the development of the light square bishop as the g2 pawn will be under attack and uh, 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 Rajabov plays h4 so going very aggressive aggressive he needs a win here so there's really no time to play passive he wants to bring the rook into the game then maybe start attacking the queen uh, and uh, already have a rook uh, ready for the attack on the black king and here uh, there are a couple of moves that are known here like bishop to d7 d captures on c4 is known uh, but the move magnus place is a new one so already as of move uh, 10 we have a completely new game and that is rook to d8 so let's see how rajabov deals with this he continues uh, with his uh, pawn pushing on the king side with h5 queen to f6 and now rook to h4 now he can play rook to f4 and further harass the black queen uh, and the magnus uh, now uh uh, you, you, we need to keep in mind that Magnus is now leading the match. So Magnus only needs a draw here and he would very much enjoy a calm positional game where he can just maneuver his uh, uh, knights, maybe push a pawn here and there and uh, claim a draw. But Magnus never plays like this most of the times. And uh, he, he could simply just, for example, captures, captures, continue development. Now, black, white queen probably needs to go back. Uh, and then he's going to further develop. However, uh, here he says, uh, nope, Rajabov's king is still in the center of the board. It's time to open up the center. And this is, uh, in general, a very principled idea. So here we have C captures on D5. We have Rook captures on D5. Uh, as the knight cannot capture, the knight is pinned. Uh, and now D captures on E5 with an attack on the black queen. And now you can really play knight captures on e5 because then uh well the bishop is no longer defended and after we capture it the queen also uh defends the rook so it's not a problem even if you eliminate one defender uh the queen still guards the rook so here black is just uh, down material and of course uh, black can resign here so instead magnus first eliminates the knight with check we have rook captures on c3 and now knight captures on e5 uh, but now he allows uh, Temur to go for queen to e8 check and this is uh, not very pleasant so queen to e8 check king to h7 and now rook to f4 attacking the uh, Carlson's queen and now Magnus brings it to d6 and this is the uh, well start of a very very difficult game for Magnus uh, here he had a chance to maybe play queen to b6 as uh, you have to move the queen so why not move the queen with tempo you get uh, an attack on the b2 pawn but he decided to play queen to d6 instead and now it's uh well it's a problem uh because uh, white can play many things but uh, white can also just play bishop to e2 just continue development as uh well you don't want to play something weird and then suffer with something like rook to d1 check so bishop to e2 is a must guarding that d1 square and now magnus plays f5 and it's a pretty crazy position uh, like I said, not something you want to have uh, in, in a game where a draw is enough to win the match, but it is exactly what Rajabov wants for his last game where he has the white pieces. And here, uh, Timur plays knight to d4. Just for the fun of it, because I know how much you guys enjoy it, uh, I will show a line that's uh, that's pretty much an instant win, but it's a very unnatural to play such a move. Uh, rook to d4. Uh, knight to d4 is uh, uh, a lot more natural because you you kind of don't want to allow this trade and you want to get your uh, sorry you want to get your knight here to attack the f5 pawn but rook to d4 is extremely powerful 
Uh, to give you an example, let's say black trades here, for example, captures, captures, and now further uh, trades, captures, captures. Uh, there is really no good move here for black. The bishop can't go anywhere as the rook would fall. The queen doesn't really have any good squares because the c7 pawn falls, so you can't really capture on d4 or anything. And other than that, you really don't have any any good move. So here, this is just lost for black. Uh, and, and if you try to go for this and allow it, then, I mean, there there's no playing this. For example, queen captures, bishop d5, that's it. There's no defending against checkmate few checks here and there you're going to avoid them uh, very easily you're going to come to f3 for example queen a3 let's say we block with the bishop and now there is no defending checkmate you have to move the bishop allow queen captures on a8 and so on so uh, although uh, this is a very very strong it's a rapid game of course you don't want to allow this and knight to d4 much more natural so this is what Tamur goes for and now the f5 pawn cannot be defended so what can magnus do here uh, not much uh, wh whatever you do you can't really move the queen away from the defense of the c7 pawn rook captures on c7 it's just devastating so here magnus tries uh, a different idea he plays c6 now uh, the situation on the queen side is well under control uh, we could say uh, but now the f5 pawn falls so knight captures on f5 and you cannot even trade here because the rook would still hang so here we have queen to d8 now magnus offers a queen trade he says all right uh, let's go into the end game I'm, I'm a pretty good end game player doesn't matter that i'm down a pawn uh, rajabov uh, happily accepts this we have captures captures and now the knight uh, goes back uh, knight to d4 uh, you could also consider maybe knight to h4 with the idea of shifting the knight over to g6 at some point uh, but like uh, it's a rapid game you you don't really have all the time uh, in the world to you know think about all the co co consequences so knight back to d4 and now uh, magnus uh, starts bringing his pieces into the game and like uh, rajabov in the previous game carlson's bishop uh, here the light score bishop really doesn't have any good squares all of this is taken so you have to be you have to play something because this rook if it remains there then you can simply resign so here uh, bishop to d4 was, bishop to d7 was played uh, and now comes uh, rook to e4 magnus the uh, rajabov doesn't allow Magnus to develop he attacks the knight rook to e8 defending hoping to bring the other rook into the game but now rook to c5 with a double attack on the knight knight to f7 now he offers a trade but now bishop to d3 offer uh, threatening a lot of very nasty discoveries so here king to h8 by Magnus and now comes rook captures so Rajabov uh, trades off a pair of rooks uh, we have b4 now preparing to further expand on the queen side and knight the d6 by magnus so maybe he can still hold this he's only down one pawn uh, but uh, his king is very uh well uh, not all that active he's all the way on h8 and uh, you know even if we trade everything down the white king will have a much easier task of, of joining the game than the black king so here uh, we have uh, bishop to g6 now attacking this rook also placing this bishop to a very nice square rook to e7 and now comes a4 so just continuing with his plan we have king to g8 the king is uh, in a really bad position here uh, if this rook ever uh, for example reaches uh, uh, if the king remains there and this rook for example reaches the back rank somehow that's it there's no defending uh, checkmate so king to g8 you have to start bringing your king into the game and uh, Rajabov does the same king e2 and also he might have some f3 e4 ideas in the future so here knight the e4 by Magnus uh, and here although you could capture this for example captures captures and then we continue with f3 e4 and so on uh he decides to keep uh, the tension on the board so here he just goes back the rook is under attack rook to c2 and now knight to f6 uh, we have b5 he continues attacking on the queen side uh, and now you have to capture because there is a triple attack now on the c6 square uh, so captures on b5 captures and now a6 now with this pawn push magnus creates a pawn on the queen side so now he's the one that's going to start pushing uh we have b captures b captures and now rook to b2 now preparing to shift the rook all the way to the back rank and as you can see uh this is uh, a lot of, a lot of problem us uh, so for for the black king so here bishop to e8 hoping to get this trade in but uh, of course uh, rajavo just pins the bishop uh we have king to f8 now defending it uh three times so now maybe the rook can move uh and now knight to f5 pre preparing to bring yet another attacker to the bishop so of course magnus uh, has to stop this he plays rook e6 but now rook to a8 and here 
uh, it's very, very hard to even find the move for Magnus. Magnus now can activate one of the pieces. He tries knight to d5, uh, hoping to get some knight to f4 check action, maybe. So uh, you can maybe pick up the bishop here on g6. But now Rajab uh, spots this and he just trades. Captures, uh, we have rook captures, uh, sorry, <laughs> rook captures, uh, and now. Uh, well, you could play something like Rook Captures, King Captures and eliminate this pawn with check. It's kind of more human to eliminate the A6 pawn because why leave uh, uh, the opponent with, with an outside pass pawn? So here, uh, Rajabov just uh, picks off this pawn, but now he has to give up this pawn. So Knight F4 check, the, the E pawn is pinned. Uh, we have King F3, Knight Captures on H5. And now it's a, a little bit uh, more bearable for Magnus because the pawns are now, uh, all, all the pawns are now on the King's side and he's only down one pawn, but the, the problem is there's a move that um, wins the game on the spot basically for, for a job of. So feel free to pause the video here and try to find this move uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, being uh, a true master of the end game. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is of course G4. And now you can see that this knight really has no squares. He does have the f6 square, but as you'll see, that's simply not enough. Uh, knight to f6 was played. That's the only available square to the knight. But now, of course, comes knight captures on h6. This was Rajabov's idea. And now if the knight is captured, we eliminate this guy with check. And now after the king moves, it's just uh, three pawns against one. Uh, two of those pawns are our pass pawns, so it's completely winning for, uh, for Tamur here. So after knight captures on h6, Magnus has to rely on some tricks to maybe save the game. He goes knight to e4 uh, and now just knight back to f5. So now Rajabov is up two pawns and this is now completely winning. Uh, but uh, I mean, there are still uh, there's still a rook and the knight in the game. Magnus will, of course, uh, do his best to pose as many problems for Rajabov as possible. Knight to g5 check, king g2 and now rook to b8. Maybe trying to, if those pawns are start marching forward, maybe you can start harassing the, the white king with the knight and the rook because uh, there is no greater team in chess than a rook and the knight. Okay, maybe the bishop pair, but if it's a very nice fully operational bishop pair. Uh, so here we have knight back to d4 uh, and now king to f7. Uh, Magnus tries activating the king a little bit. We have rook to a5 now, attacking the knight. Knight to e4, and now comes rook to e5. So Rajabov centralizes the rook, forces the knight to move. Knight back to f6, and only now f3. So now slowly uh, the king will find its way, uh, you know, in black's half of the, uh, the, the position. So g6 by Magnus, now king g3. We have rook to b1 trying something, but now rook to b5. Here Rajabov offers a, a trade of rooks. Of course, uh, you shouldn't agree to this, but then again, there's really not all that much you can play. If you deliver a check, king f4, and now, you know, pawns are just marching forward, the rook can push the king further back. You can even start bringing the king deeper into the position. So instead, after rook to b5, Magnus actually traded rooks here. We have captures, captures, and now g5. So maybe you can still hold this, but it's very, very unlikely. Knight to c3 was played. We have king to g6, and here uh, Rajabov just played f4, and it was in this position on move 54 that Magnus Carlsen resigned to the game. And by doing so, Rajabov now equalized the match, and tomorrow we're going to have uh, a very, very exciting matchup as who wins tomorrow wins the, uh, the semifinals and is going into the finals. So that's it for this match. We're going to check out the other match as well as that's uh, also some really, really incredible chess being played there by Yanni Pomnichi and Wesley Soso. So stay tuned for that as well. And here uh, you resign as, I mean, it's three pawns against one. But for those of you who are maybe new to chess, to show you how hopeless the position is, it doesn't matter. Uh, you never gain anything by capturing here. You just uh, make white's life easier. And if you try to do anything, waste moves, we can just, uh, you know, uh, do, do anything. Let's say knight to e4. Now we offer a trade. If the knight uh, doesn't trade, then we pick up uh, we pick up this pawn. Uh, if we trade, then we can just get the king into the game. Let's say this is now completely winning. Uh, and if you don't do this, there's like nothing you can do. If you try knight to h7, then this is just silly. We can even just play this knight captures, knight captures, pawn captures, and now it's uh, again. It doesn't matter that we've broken our pawn structure. This is completely winning. So yeah, after f4, uh, Magnus resigns, and for those of you who guessed it correctly, congratulations again, because uh, this is what Magnus said in an interview after the game. I blundered, and he played well, thank you, and see you tomorrow, and then he shut down the the <laughs> the, uh, the the live stream, as uh, I, ma I imagine he wasn't very interested in giving an interview after 
a, a game like this. Uh, but yeah, uh, congratulations to everyone who solved the position and also who solved uh, the mystery behind who who, who said this. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, we are going to cover uh, the other match as well. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Lee Roberts, uh, Daniel Grabowski, uh, Jesse Bronson, Christian Meinzaha, and David Kimura for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the FTX Crypto Cup, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.